QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Invoice created from check, created from purchase order. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources, such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the home page to the gray area, view drop down, hide icon bar, open windows, list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial, P to the L, profit to the loss, income statement, range and changing, 010123, 123. And then let's customize it so we can go to the fonts and numbers and bring that font up to 14 these days. That's what we do. 14, yes, okay. And then let's go to the reports drop down again to pick up that other company and financial big balance sheet, the other big financial report. Let's customize it before range and changing from 010123 to 123123. And then fonts and numbers to change the font to 14 to match what we did with the income statement or profit loss. Yes, okay. That's the setup process we do every time. Let's go back on over to the home page. We're now gonna be entering an invoice, which we have done in a prior presentation, but this time we're imagining that we made the purchase of inventory with the purchase order and we linked it then or paid it with a right check form that we bought it specifically for a customer in mind and are now turning around to create the invoice after having received the inventory, in our case, the guitar. So we're talking about inventory in this case, when we're thinking about process, you'll recall from prior presentations that when you have inventory, the question then would be, do you want a perpetual inventory system or a periodic inventory system? A periodic inventory system, you might be tracking, for example, outside of the QuickBooks system. A perpetual inventory system means you have inventory turned on and are tracking it within the system, which you can turn on by going to the edit dropdown and in the preferences and is indicated that it is on by this line item up top. Now, when you make the purchase of inventory, if you have to pay for the inventory when you purchase it, as we, as we typically do when we pay for online stuff personally, buying stuff from like Amazon, then we would record the payment with a check form or a credit card charge at the point in time we purchase it. However, if we have the power to request the inventory before paying for it, then we're gonna use the purchase order. We've entered a couple purchase orders in prior presentations. For example, let's imagine Epiphone is the vendor that we're purchasing our guitars from. We're imagining that we had a customer come to us and say, hey, look, I would like this guitar. We don't have those guitars, we say. They want it in plaid or something like that. So we're gonna have a custom order for a particular customer. Then when we made the purchase order, which we put together and we'll look at it in a second, but we put it together in a prior presentation, we actually added the customer field in the purchase order, which is a request for the inventory. The, the vendor, which is in our case, uh, Epiphone in this example, doesn't need the customer information, but by us adding it in there, then when we get the guitars, it'll make it easier for us to see that uh, who ordered it and turn around and then create the invoice. So in a prior presentation, we made a purchase order for purchases of inventory, guitars in our case, specifically for particular customers. We marked that on the purchase order. We then received the guitars. We got the bill that we got and instead, instead of entering the bill into our system, which would increase accounts payable, we simply just paid the physical bill with a check form. Now we're gonna turn around and create an invoice because we're on the sales side of things and we're gonna try to sell this guitar that we now have to our customer. 
Let's recap that again by looking at the vendor center. I'm gonna find it by going to the vendor dropdown in vendor center. And then if you go into, you could go a couple different ways. I could go into Epiphone, for example. I wanna look at all dates, make sure I got all dates here. And then I've got my two purchase orders down here and I can, and these are the purchase orders that we have created for that particular vendor. We can also, and then we, and then we have the check form. So let's take a look at that. For example, if I double click on the four here, purchase order, it says we've received the purchase order as we can see, and we purchased these specifically for the customer of Eric music. So the purchase order is a request for vendor, uh, our vendor Epiphone to give us these guitars, to ship out the guitars. It doesn't record a financial transaction because we didn't pay for them and we don't have the guitars. It's just a request. We put the name of the customer that we're gonna turn around and sell the guitars to on the purchase order. Epiphone doesn't need to know about Eric Music, our customer, but having it on the purchase order will make it easier for us to then, when we receive the guitars, to kind of carry that through and turn around and sell these guitars to Eric Music, the people we bought the guitar specifically for. Closing that out, if I go to the check form, this is the form that was used to pay to pay off for that those guitars. And you can see down here, there's the two items. It's checked off as billable. They're checked off as billable because that's the thing that's gonna indicate to QuickBooks that when I create an invoice for Eric Music, it's gonna ask me, do you want me to pull in these two items uh, from, from the time when you paid for these, for these guitars? And we're gonna pull that in and that will hopefully create the invoice for us so that we can turn around and invoice the customer. Okay, closing that out. You can also see that over here on the, on the transactions item. If you went into the purchase order, you could sort by the purchase order for Epiphone. And if we go into the checks, you know, we could find the checks just if you wanted to kind of sort around and find the purchase orders. So now we're going to be created. Let's go back to the homepage. I'm gonna create an invoice now. So I'm gonna go into the invoice and turn around because I'm imagining I just paid that, I just paid the check and I'm saying, okay, I can see that this is tied to Eric Music. So I'm gonna type in Eric Music for the customer. And it says the customer or job you selected has outstanding billable time and or costs. Do you want to select the outstanding billable time and cost to add to this invoice? I'm gonna say, yes, we do add them. And it's under time as a default. Notice that items are in the items over here, usually indicating inventory items. So I'm gonna check off the, the two inventory items. Those are the ones I want to add and then say, okay. Now, if that pop-up didn't come up or you did something uh, different and you wanted to go to add, uh, add the item here, then you can go up to that item again and see these items that have been added. All right, so then now it's just gonna be an invoice that has now been populated from the purchase order that was carried over to the check form that we used instead of a bill form. And then we'd use that to create the invoice now that we have these guitars. We're gonna say that the date is gonna be 123, we'll say 2023 invoice number populates automatically. Let's make the terms net 30, meaning we're gonna send out the invoice at this date. We expect to be paid 30 days later. This is the Epiphone, 50 of them we're imagining they bought just for our example problem. That comes out to $500. Notice here that it's actually using the proper amount because uh, it's using because of the item. So if I go to the lists and item lists, this is an ELP. Uh, if I double click on the ELP, we said it cost $400. That's what was populated in the purchase order, but we're selling it for $500, of course. So it's picking up the proper amount. And this is something I think it does better than the QuickBooks Online doesn't quite do that quite as well. It's a taxable item. And then the semi hollow body, $400 taxable. The sales tax is at the 1,450 because it's the items are being used to note that it has sales tax applicable. What's this gonna do? It's an invoice. The invoice is gonna increase accounts receivable, including the sales tax for the 30,450. The other side's gonna go to sales, not including the sales tax. It's gonna be the 25,000 plus the 4,000. The sales tax is gonna increase the payable, sales tax payable on the balance sheet, which we will have to pay in the future. And the inventory is gonna be going down by amounts that are not on the invoice, but driven by the items and cost of goods sold, the expense related to us uh, selling the guitars is going to be going up. 
and also the sub ledger for accounts receivable will be impacted by customer Eric Music and the sub ledger for inventory will be impacted for the quantity of inventory difference change. Let's check it out, save it and close it. And I'm not gonna email it, so I'm gonna say save it and close it. You've changed it, I'm gonna say yes, that's what we want. Let's go to the balance sheet and check it out. So we're gonna go to the accounts receivable, drill down on it, there's Eric Music. If I drill down on that, there's the 30,450, closing it back out, closing it back out. The other side going to the P, to the L, to the profit, to the loss, to the income statement, double clicking on sales. We've got the two line items, 25,000 and 4,000, because we had two different inventory items. No sales tax, however, including on the income statement, closing those out. The sales tax is on the balance sheet. It's under the liabilities, liabilities, sales tax payable double clicking on it we've got the two items of the sales tax because there were two different line items one for the account the state in the in the county or local or whatever but, but the total was five percent that we totaled up in our in our made up uh, example problem to get a nice generic five percent then we said inventory is going to go down so inventory is going down by the these two items because they're two different items by amounts that are not on the invoice but driven by the item so the system knows about them even though not on the invoice the other side going to the uh, profit and loss for cost of goods sold so there's those two items here the net impact on the income statement is the increase in the sales minus the cost of goods sold will be the impact on net income back to the balance sheet if I go to the receivables, I can also see this in the reports, customers and receivables, and take a look at the customer balance summary, or let's do the detail, customer balance detail. And that's gonna give us this, who was this? This was Eric. There's the 30,000 there. The total ties out to the 38,671.50, which is on the balance sheet. That looks good. And then we've got the inventory, 15,678.50. If I see the sub ledger for inventory, sub ledger that is here. Let's make the date 12, 31, 2, 3, let's say. So now we've recalculated the amount on hand, totals up to 15,678 at this point, which should tie out to the 15,678 on the balance sheet. Let's do it again. Let's go back to the, let's go back to the uh, vendor center. And this time we're gonna a uh, magic music stuff store or we're gonna imagine Gibson. Let's go to Gibson, Gibson USA. And then we've got the two purchase orders. Let's open one of these purchase orders. And so we received this purchase order and you've got, we assigned the customer. So we're imagining the customer came in, Music Stuff stores the customer, requested a guitar, which is a Gibson type of guitar. We don't have it, so we're gonna order. So we then made a purchase order requesting a GSP, Gibson SG or whatever guitar and that, that we're gonna buy custom for this customer music stuff store from Gibson. Gibson doesn't need to know about our customer, but us adding the customer will help us to follow this transaction through. We've received this item, so we imagine the box of guitars came, or the one guitar came in a box, and then we made a payment for it with a check form. So we made a payment and we made it billable. So now it's billable. That's indicating that when I make an invoice for music stuff store, it will then allow us to populate this item in it. So now if we go back to the home page, we're going to turn around and we're going to say, now we've done the purchasing process. And now we're going to create an invoice. We're now on the sales side of things. And we're going to go to, to contacting this music stuff store and saying, Hey, this is now saying you've got some items linked to it. I'm paraphrasing. Okay. Those items are in the items that indicates inventory items. We're going to say link to that. We now want to contact our customer and say, hey, look, you ordered this thing. It's here. It's ready to go. Let's make this on the 24th terms. Let's make them all net 30 on the terms just to standardize our terms. So we expect to be paid in 30 days and so on. So this is an invoice. What's going to happen? I, I'm just going to say this every time because I, this is what I would recommend doing until you fully understand these forms. Invoice is going to increase accounts receivable by the 8,158.5, which includes the sales tax. Other side goes to sales, but only for the 7,770. The sales tax increases the payable, sales tax payable. 
the inventory is going to go down by an amount not on the invoice but driven by the item the cost of goods sold is going to go up by the same amount the net impact on the income statement is going to be the sales price minus the cost of goods sold the accounts receivable will be supported by a sub ledger that will break out by customer for music stuff store and the balance sheet account of inventory will be supported by a sub ledger which will be adjusted down for the 10 units of the gsb gibson guitars that we sold let's save it and close it and check it out i'm not going to do the email thing we're just saving it yes we changed the terms okay quickbooks so now we're going to say accounts receivable double clicking on it it's going uh here's the accounts receivable going up and it's by the full amount of the uh, 815850. Closing that back out, closing that back out. The other side going to the profit and loss or income statement, double clicking on sales. So it's being impacted by the amount not including the sales tax. And then the sales tax is on the balance sheet. Let's close that out. Balance sheet under the the uh, sales tax payable double clicking on that and it's under these couple line items because there's two people that were paying for the sales tax but we're charging just the five percent that's going to be paid to the city and the state closing that out closing that out we've got inventory is going down so if i double click on inventory then it's going down by the amounts that is not on or the amount not on the actual invoice but driven by the item closing this out and then the profit and loss cost of goods sold is going up by that same amount closing this out the net impact on the income statement is the sales price minus the cost of goods sold for net income the balance sheet also has a sub ledger for accounts receivable 46830 which we can see the customer balance detail so if I go into the customer balance detail then there's uh there's the payment there's what did we just make we just made an invoice for not for anderson music stuff store there it is music stuff store no music stuff stores here that's the one okay and then inventory if i go into inventory we've got this in inventory that should tie out to our inventory valuation summary on the left hand side which has been adjusted for the amounts on hand now at the 9698 which is the 9698 here notice how much easier this would be now to use the trial balance which we might start doing more and more in the future go into the accounting and taxes and trial balance where i can change the dates from 010123 to 123 customize it let's bring the fonts and numbers even higher up to 16 and say okay yes and okay because now you can check the accounts receivable and the sales and the cost of goods sold on the same reports drilling down on them as long as you can imagine or envision or see where the balance sheet start and where the income statement starts without all of the subtotals also note that if i go into the customer center uh, the customer center then we've got the receivables here that we can also track and this is how we would most likely track the invoices for like say music stuff store so now we've got the invoice that we've got a track to receive the payment on so that's the general process if i go back to the trial balance you can see where we stand at this point want to check your numbers if there's any uh, any discrepancies then i would change the date range and it's often a date issue and then you can double click and drill down on any discrepancies and possibly change the date if you need to 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 line up here we will be going through transaction detail reports after we get through the end of one month of transactions and that's another way that you can kind of check your numbers at that point